So in this lecture, I'm not actually going to uh, introduce any uh, sort of new concepts, but I want to take some of the hereditary integrals that we've already talked about and give you some alternate forms for them. Uh, the reason that I want to do that is because uh, sometimes it's more convenient to solve problems in these alternate forms, um, and in particular when we talk about uh, 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 converting these hereditary integrals into the form of a, of a Stiltz's integral, um, we'll want to uh, be able to use that for uh, when we talk about oscillatory loading, which is, which is coming up in the near future. Let me begin by just reminding you what the hereditary integral for a creep compliance looks like. Okay, so uh, recall, uh, for creep compliance, uh, that is where creep compliance um, is the kernel in the hereditary integral, uh, we can write uh, this the strain as follows. The strain as a function of time is equal to uh, sigma naught times j of t, which is right the, the creep compliance, uh, plus the integral from 0 to t of j t minus c, where c is our variable of integration, sigma dot, which is a function of c times d c. Okay, let's call that equation 1. Okay, that we, we've already derived that. That's, that's nothing new. But, I, but what I can do is I can integrate equation 1 by parts. Okay, so let's see what happens when we do that. So integrating uh, equation 1 by parts. Okay, so if we do that, we end up with epsilon of t is equal to sigma naught times j of t. Uh, and then we're going to integrate by parts. So... Uh, we'll bring out this j of t minus c times uh, now sigma of c. We're integrating it by parts. Evaluated from 0 to t minus the integral from 0 to t of now this term is just um, sigma of c. And this term looks like uh, dj of t minus c divided by uh, dx c, right? Uh, and then that's, of course, integrated over dx c. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and carry on uh, some of the arithmetic here. So this just remains sigma naught times j of t, plus, now if I, if I apply c is equal to t, then this quantity becomes j of 0, and then c uh, equaling t, this becomes sigma of t minus, uh, if I plug in c equals 0, this looks like j of t, uh, and then times sigma of 0, right, minus its integral from 0 to t of sigma c uh, dj t minus c dx c integrated over c. Okay, so note that this sigma naught, that is just sigma evaluated at zero, so that this first term cancels with this term, uh, and we can write then, this ends up looking like j evaluated at zero times sigma of t minus the integral from zero to t of sigma c uh, dj t minus c divided by dx c. Okay, let's call that equation two. Now we just, we're gonna work with this term inside the integral, this dj t minus c dx c term, okay? And I'll just say, uh, noting uh, that if we take d t minus c, uh, that, and we remember that, that uh, t in this case is is something in in the limit of integration. It's not one of the variables. So this is actually just equal to, in this case, negative dx c. Okay? Um, so then we can write that term. So we may write that uh, dj of t minus c uh, dx c is equal to, I'm just going to now uh, substitute this in. Uh, this looks like negative dj t minus c d t minus c. Okay, let's call that equation three. 
Okay, uh, and then we can uh, uh, formalize this a little bit more and write this as negative, just j dot of t minus c. Okay, so substituting uh, equation three into two, so substitute three into two, that gives us uh, epsilon of t is going to be equal to j evaluated at time t equals zero times sigma of t. Uh, now my I'm going to swap the sign because I have a negative sign there. So plus integral from zero to t of sigma c times j dot t minus c dc. Okay. Call that equation four. Okay. Uh, so we can we could say something similar about the relaxation modulus. So just say, in a similar manner, uh, we can write we can write the uh, hereditary integral on the relaxation modulus modulus uh, as follows. We can write it uh, just in a very similar fashion. Sigma of t is equal to now y of zero, right? That's the relaxation modulus evaluated at zero times epsilon of t. And by the same uh, arguments, integral from zero to t, epsilon c times y dot t minus c d c. Okay? So that's the, the reformatting of, of the hereditary integral. So this is an equivalent form. Okay, I want to give just a final comment and say the, the alternate forms um, given by equations four and five, okay, so the alternate hereditary integral forms uh, given in, are given by four and five. Uh, I'm just presenting them here for com completeness. Okay, okay, so you can, uh, just see a, another way to write it because sometimes it's more convenient uh, to use these forms. Okay, for completeness, as some problems are more conveniently solved using these forms. Okay, conveniently solved uh, using these forms. I want to introduce one more uh, integral representation that we're going to use for oscillatory loads. So let me do that now. Just say that as we consider um, oscillating loads, which is coming up very soon, so as we consider oscillating loads, the form of a Stilchus integral becomes more convenient. Okay, a Stilchus integral becomes more convenient, and I'll show you how we can get to that. Okay, so to do to to get it in the form that we need, let's just note. Okay, that. Um, that sigma dot of C, right, the stress rate, um, is going to be equal to zero for all C less than zero. Okay, so remember our integral and our hereditary integral ran from zero up to T, but what that means is that so taking the limit now, okay, uh, from, so that in, instead of zero now we take it as negative infinity right because that stress rate was already zero um, it doesn't alter the integral okay so uh, taking the limit from zero to negative infinity does not alter the integral okay so we may write the following we can write then that epsilon of t and i'm now going to just write it in the the form that we'd had without pulling out the some some instantaneous stress jump uh, just for convenience, we can write it as then negative infinity to t instead of from zero to t of j of t minus c uh, sigma dot c d c. Uh, we could also uh, write it back in in the form that we had originally derived it in, uh, which was j of t minus c times d sigma, which was also which was a function of c. Okay. Let's call this equation six, and note that this form is a the Stilchus integral. 
Again, I don't, I'm not expecting you to derive this, but I do. But we're going to use this form um, extensively uh, going forward. So I want you to be aware of where it's coming from. It's a pretty straightforward extension. And then finally, we can just say similarly. Okay. Uh, uh, for the stress, we can write uh, what you already can probably expect in terms of now the relaxation modulus. Okay. Uh, we're, in this case, we're going to say that uh, epsilon dot of C uh, is equal to zero for C less than zero, right? And let us then take that lower limit from zero to negative infinity. Um, we can then write the equation sigma of T is equal to the integral from negative infinity to T of now the relaxation modulus Y T minus C uh, times epsilon dot C dc which or we could also write as negative infinity to t of y t minus c d epsilon which is a function of c okay call that equation seven so there you have it those are the alternate forms that we we may use and we'll, we'll just pick and choose uh, depending on which form is the most convenient for whatever problem that we're solving